morning chaps uh, I'm only up here this morning because I had to uh, do an allotment viewing for somebody who's coming onto our allotment site uh, but as I've been up here I've noticed that the peppermint chard um, we've got three patches of peppermint chard <laughs> never enough never enough but they've got three patches one down this end which were the ones that were uh, kept aside for Hannah's show garden which we then put into the bed they're looking really strong and the ones under the bean arches halfway up the allotment looking really strong the bed that's got the main amount of them up at the top end of the allotment which I think is a bit more exposed is looking a bit sad actually so double whammy I'm going to go and tidy them up and I'm going to collect enough chard for a chard lasagna So this is the patch I mean, uh, this was looking absolutely magnificent about a week ago, but it really has been hit by the frost. Their leaves just turned to absolute mush like most things that aren't frost hardy. And I mean, chard is really pretty tough and this stuff should last us the whole winter as long as we cover it. So I'm gonna have to fashion some sort of poly cover over the top of it for winter, especially seems what I'd put in the poly tunnel, which should have been our early spring crop, um, is non-existent. So I'll just tidy these up. Some of the lower leaves have gone particularly slimy. Unfortunately, I am gloveless because I decided to take all the gloves home to wash them and uh, they have remained there. <laughs> so yeah, all of these mushy, nasty leaves, I just pull off, stick them in the compost heap and take off as many good leaves as I think to tidy up the plants and then we can make the chard lasagna from it. The plants aren't growing very much at the moment, obviously light levels are super low and it's just too cold for them. So I'll take the picking off today and we've probably got another picking left on here and then I will, like I say, I'm going to cover them. They won't grow over winter as in we'll have a lush, endless supply of chard over winter, but what they will do, hopefully, is survive and then we'll have a really good early flush of chard in spring because if they're under like a polythene cover which is what I'm planning to cover them with so it'd be like a mini poly tunnel they should just sit there quite happily sulking but you know alive for the whole of winter and then the moment that we start getting that sunshine and a tiny bit of warmth in spring they will burst back into life which gives you a really nice bit of greenery before everything else has really got going uh, for the summer so it's like I think it's called the hunger gap, you know, where it's the weather's starting to really cheer up, but nothing has actually <laughs> started producing yet enough to be picked. So that's what I'm going to be doing these for. We've got chard dotted across the whole plot. Unfortunately, most of it was just kind of plonked in when we had excess plants. And so covering them is going to be a bit tricky because they're kind of individual plants. But this lot as a big old bunch like this will be able to cover it. No problem. All I need to do really is hunt down the extra polythene plastic that I had left over from when we covered the polytunnel. However, I'm actually saying this with great confidence about it surviving the winter, but this is the first year that I've actually grown the peppermint chard. I've been eyeing it up at Kew Gardens for <laughs> a good number of years, but I couldn't get hold of any seed. So this is actually the first year that I'll be trying to overwinter it. Uh, normally the chard that I overwinter, because it's so reliable, is the Lucullus chard, but it's got quite a different leaf habit. Whereas these ones are all magnificent stem and sort of dark, glossy leaves, they're very, very soft and have much less prominent stems. So who knows? Actually, I do have a whole row of young Lucullus at the bottom of the plot. I might have to cover that. They were the last sowing I made, which would have been maybe, what, early to mid-August? And we won't be sowing any more at all until April. Like, that's the sort of standard April-May time that you would sow chard. So yeah, if I don't manage to keep some of this over the winter, it won't be until July, August that we're eating it next. And I am not prepared to cope with that. <laughs> but that is easily enough for the chard lasagna. And I'm just gonna recover these. I have to go and find that plastic. I'm not sure what I've done with it. I think it might be at home, so I can't cover them today. Uh, I will just recover them because this is the bird protection. And at the moment, the birds are stripping anything with a bit of soft tender leaf. <laughs> so yeah protect your chard ladies and gentlemen
Excellent. That is definitely enough for dinner. My hands are absolutely freezing, couldn't find any gloves. I'm gonna go home, warm them up. Just decided to bring the um, uh, checkmate garlic, which is the garlic which is up, out, uh, because it's pretty much ready. Um, not a great deal of sign from Kingsland White still. I mean, they're dead up, but they're nowhere near. Like these are really up, if you can see them. Um, so as soon as they come up a bit higher, we'll bring them out as well. But one of the things that we are gonna do, I'm not gonna do it today because, um, well, I'm just not. <laughs> I'm gonna do it tomorrow. Uh, is that the stuff in the greenhouse is getting very damp and it's ready to come out. Things like the broad beans and the peas that we've got in there. Yeah, we need to get them out and hardened up, uh, ready to go in the ground. Um, at the moment, they're just really super soft and actually getting a bit damp in the greenhouse. They're getting a little bit mouldy. Uh, so we're going to start doing that. But that's a long process. Again, it's like chicken and egg because we've got to clear the cold frame out, which we've been using to store junk. <laughs> Um, so we've got to clear that out before we can get that out. And we've also got two super cold nights coming up. I say super cold, like two degrees. Um, but then it gets warmer again. So we're going to bring them out for the warmer. Sorry, just waiting for an aeroplane to go over. Um, yeah, but that's all going to be jobs for tomorrow and the day after. Um, hopefully it's not going to be raining. It's just starting to drizzle up here now. So I think it's time to go home. Uh, Sorry, I'm crouched, that's why I'm moving around so much. If I stand up, I'm here. I'm, like, <sighs> I'm doing like the crab dance, you know, like with my legs bent. Um, not relevant. No, all I'm trying to say really is that we've got quite a lot of stuff to do in the greenhouse because I've still got all the peppers in there. They all need to be cleared out. The soil needs to be taken. We're probably gonna top up the carrots with that. Loads of stuff to do, but we're just not gonna do it today. So yeah. I will see you up here again tomorrow. Lil, you missed the turning. You missed it. It's here.
Good morning. I tell you what, neither of us really feel like being up here today. <laughs> it's, uh, mum's not particularly well. She feels miserable and just wants to go back to bed. And uh, I don't feel particularly miserable. I just, it's just, the weather's just been damp for God, weeks. Like, it's not raining. It's just like the air is saturated and it's just cold and it's grey. <laughs> And uh, I would just feel like not being here. However, I am here and actually, it's not that cold. I don't think I need a hat, especially not in the greenhouse. <laughs> actually, what temperature is it? Thirteen degrees in here, yeah, it's not that cold. Um, yeah, but I don't think I'm alone in feeling like I just want to hibernate at the moment. Uh, I've seen a lot of stuff on Instagram uh, of people just being like, ugh. I don't want to be up here at their own allotments, like not up here. <laughs> oh, however, there are still things to do. And yesterday I was talking about the fact that the peas and the broad beans really need to come out of here. Uh, they are quite damp and getting a little bit mouldy. So you can see, look at that. That is not great. Bit of cold damage and then it's gone, gone mouldy. So I've got to get those starting to harden off. Same with the peas, look. That's, that's not great. So I really do have to make some space outside and uh, try and start hardening them off. Actually up this end, they all look fine. Uh, it's just kind of where it's got all a bit tucked in here. Uh, obviously it's been collecting the damp. So uh, yeah, I'll give that a bit more space. They should be all right, they should be fine. We do actually have a second, so this is the, the first sort of broad beans that mum sowed and then they took forever to come up so we panicked and sowed some more and these are just starting to come up now you can see just uh just starting to appear so we've got back up we've got back up okay so i want to start hardening them off but the cold frame that's outside uh, has unfortunately started being used as a bit of a, just a general storage facility and also it's had lily and various other even larger cats than lily sleeping on it all summer and i think it's not looking in the best of shape. So I'm gonna go and investigate how that's going. Get these out hopefully into there or some sort of makeshift cold frame if that needs repair. And then I've got to clear all of this. okay change of plan that needs a bit of work uh, that was actually one of the first things I made on like on video <laughs> and uh, at the time we didn't have any uh, new wood and we didn't have any money <laughs> well I didn't have any money uh, so what I used was all like we've got like um, the part of our fence had collapsed on the edge it had been here for years and uh, I used the wood that I was kind of dismantling from that to make that um, cold frame and also I used the old plastic from the polytunnel that had died a death uh, <laughs> so basically it was rotten when I made it um, but now I've got loads of new wood so I think I'm just gonna have to have another go with that uh, and that one is looking very very sad anyway I'm not gonna put the peas and the beans in there so I'm actually going to use you know the uh, box that we've got the allium leaf miner box over what was my three different types of leaks that are just completely vanished into thin air. Uh, I'm gonna use that sort of as a makeshift cold frame and just put the peas and the beans under that. So they've got a bit more airflow. Uh, it's a bit colder for them and hopefully that'll harden them off. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna get them under there pronto. And then, then it is clearing out the peppers.
found that some of those pots have actually got some really quite nice looking coriander plants growing in them an awful lot nicer than what we haven't got growing in the polytunnel <laughs> uh, so mum's going to just rescue them before I tip them out it's really nice to find these little plants just growing away happily in here actually hence that we're rescuing them Coriander is something that over the years I've really, really struggled to grow. And it's only, what, last year, the year before that I kind of discovered I've been doing it all wrong. I was trying to treat it like parsley. So when we grow parsley, we sow it into a seed tray and then or into cells, you know, and then we plant out each individual one. They go out into the beds. When you're harvesting them, you're taking leaves off, but you're actually preserving the main plant itself and they will do you for the whole year coriander is i was trying to grow coriander like that it turns out that's nonsense and the breakthrough came when i was getting loads and loads of free seed off the front of grow your own magazine and for like weeks on end we were getting just packets and packets and packets of coriander seed and so i started sowing it in drills between the carrots under the envirometh box in the carrot bed and i realized you don't grow it like parsley at all you just sow it harvest it sow it harvest it found it needs a little bit of protection mainly just to keep the leaves really soft and tender but under that EnviroMesh box they were outstanding so yeah I've got to be less precious with it and I'm going to buy you know a big multi-pack bag of coriander seed from probably Premier Seeds Direct you know because they sell things in such big quantities and next year we're just going to sow it every two weeks in drills under a bit of protection and when we want it cut the whole lot off and so again, and then hopefully we will have good coriander for the majority of the summer. It's funny I'm saying that and then here I am like planting up these little tiny coriander plants, but I don't have any for winter and these will just provide, you know, just a little bit of coriander taste on the top of something. It's hardly going to be a major ingredient with five plants, is it? <laughs> anyway, I'm rescuing all the soil out of these pots where the peppers and the aubergines have been growing away. It was new compost when I put it in. And uh, although it's not going to have a great deal left in it because the plants themselves were quite productive, I am going to bung it all into the carrot bed, which is this one under here, where I grew said coriander last year so successfully. I'm using it to top up the soil in here. And although it's not going to have a great nutrient content or anything, it's got the right really fluffy texture and I'll be able to add in some organic matter um, over the winter or in the spring ready to sow the carrots into. And the coriander, of course. <laughs> we weren't very successful with carrots this year, actually, because um, we had really terrible germination. So I'm buying all new seed this year, and uh, hopefully we are going to have uh, this whole box absolutely stuffed full of carrots, with a bit of added depth of soil, because uh, there's only so big a carrot can grow in, like four inches of soil. <laughs> well, hey, we have a sort of cleared greenhouse. So along with the polytunnel, uh, we got to do some big changes in here this year. So that's what we're going to do in this year. And I think what I'm going to do is this bench that we've got along here is actually going to go along this edge of the poly. This isn't a poly. <laughs> On this edge of the greenhouse um, at quite a low level. And we're going to use that for the seed. So it's just going to be one um, tray wide. And then on this back wall is where I'm going to grow the cucumbers up and we're just going to have chilies in here and I'm going to do aubergine and peppers and tomatoes in the polytunnel and keep them separated out like that. That's my plan anyway, but we also want to do something about the floor in here. We're thinking of paving. Paving's a bit of a pain because we have to lug it all up here. Very envious of those of you who can drive close to your plot. But this wood chip really isn't doing it for me and it's full of slugs. So I'm thinking bench along that way, I will need to measure up the greenhouse to see what I can get hold of. The sun comes in from this side, so it's not gonna be blocking out the light of anything. And I'm thinking cucumbers up the back wall and chilies everywhere else. That's my plan. I'm also thinking about getting quite serious on the chili front this year and going for quad grows, which are like an automated watering pot. Uh, it's quite an investment, so I'm not entirely sure yet, but I'm kind of thinking of it. So I just need to make sure that if I move the bench over that I can fit the required number of pots in here. But you know, I am thinking about it. <laughs> and having slabs on the ground will really help with that because they're quite large pots. Uh, they need something stable to sit on.
<laughs> well, while we've been faffing with the greenhouse and the cold frame, I've just remembered we're supposed to have potatoes in these pots. We bunged these in as we turfed our proper season potatoes out, but we completely forgot about them. I think we're gonna have a look if there's anything in there at all. Okay, this could be potato humiliation. So that is what we got. However, I'd like to say that we completely messed up. This is the idea of the Christmas potatoes. We didn't plant them too late. Um, we made some fundamental errors. Basically, the idea is that you grow them, you start them outside obviously and um, get them going and then they go into the greenhouse. We never did like that crucial stage where we put them in the greenhouse. We just tucked them behind it completely forgot about them. I also think that some of the other ones that we had around there got blight. Um, so we planted them, then they were outside, so they're just vulnerable to the blight and I think that's what happened. So we are gonna tip them out though because if we leave them in those pots, all they're gonna do is rot. I want to do before we leave today actually I tell you what I was really not impressed didn't really feel like doing anything when I got up here this morning but you know you start going and you do feel better <laughs> but uh, those broad beans that I've put out to kind of harden off or like start hardening off the bed that they're going in has still got the calendula in so I'm going to clear that and get that ready this is the bed where we had the outdoor tomatoes this year uh, which were not a raging success because after that incredibly wet July and August and the blight was just insane. And I didn't grow blight resistant varieties out here. There was one um, which it turned out to be blight resistant, but I didn't grow it that way. It was called Jet Setter. But this coming year, I have a whole selection of blight resistant varieties of tomatoes to try, which I'm very excited about. So this will be a tomato bed again next year. But in the meantime, I'm gonna use the structure up the center to support the broad beans. Broad beans need quite a lot of support, particularly the ones that are overwintered because they really do face a bit of a battering uh, during the winter and the early spring. You know, when we get all the storms and stuff in March, they're knocked over all the time. And I normally try and string them, you know, uh, with poles on either side, string them together. It's never really enough and you end up with them flopping all over the show. So I'm gonna utilize this really quite sturdy tomato structure for my beans this year. And irrelevant to uh, the beans or the tomatoes, it's also going to be a nursery bed for the calendula for next year. So that's what I'm pulling out now. And I've let it go this long because it's self-seeded all into this bed. And uh, the seed is just going to sit there over winter. And then come spring, I should have a really nice carpet of beautiful little calendula seedlings coming up in here, which I will then either pot on if it's really super early before I move them across the rest of the plot. I might just dig them out in chunks and plonk them around. These were all the uh, bog standard bright orange single layer of petals calendula, you know, like the bog standard one. Makes excellent calendula oil, which is good for your face and makes really good calendula tea, which is apparently extremely good for you, but it doesn't taste like much, I can tell you. <laughs> but they're grown so often on allotments because uh, they have a couple of particularly handy uses. One thing, they're quite a strong scent and that is supposed to keep a lot of bugs away from your plants. 
They also uh, really loved by hoverflies and hoverflies eat aphids. So fantastic. But I've just realized they're a bit woody to bung straight in the compost. So I'm gonna have to chop them up. Something else I'm gonna have to chop up for the compost is this absolute monstrosity. This is the uh, last tromboncino that we pulled off and I just left it on top of this cage and it is rank. It absolutely stinks as well, but now it's so soft, I don't wanna pick it up. Something else we've left though, we have got seed on the chard. Exciting times. Look at that, can you see all those little seed on there? Chard seed. I've never left it to go to seed before actually, because I'm normally whipping out the flower stems, trying to keep it productive as long as possible. So this is exciting. But on that exciting note, hey girlies, that is exciting, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's time to head home. Afternoon, it is a bit of a chilly afternoon up here this morning. And I think actually you're probably having a bit of wind damage currently, but I have good news on that front. First thing I've realized, that's better. I've got you in protection now. It's a shame because it's actually like, there's a bit of sunshine outside, but it is breezy. And now we've got another aeroplane. But yeah, so I have just realised, I was looking at the calendar, and so this vlog is coming out on, well, Monday for Patreons and Tuesday for everybody else. Um, next vlog is going to be Christmas Day, then Boxing Day. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Do you know how many Christmas presents I've bought so far? we didn't get an enormous amount done this week and two things that were on my list that I haven't got done is to chop down the raspberry canes and store them away for next year and uh, also to prune the grape now this will be the first year that I've actually properly pruned that grape and uh, firstly I'm a bit nervous about it <laughs> um, I've never pruned a grape properly before or I have actually pruned grapes but they've been really well trained grapes and it's really obvious where you're going to cut uh, not my own grapes and not one that looks like an enormous hairy monster like mine does so I'm going to have to do a bit of a reading about that and uh, put that into practice next week. But apart from those two things, we got the greenhouse pretty much cleared out now. That's good. Finally got the peas, the broad beans out, cleared a bit of the tomato bed. So I'm not unhappy with the amount that we got done, considering that neither of us wanted to do anything. It was <laughs> We just really didn't fancy it this week. But we got some things done. Greenhouse is clear. So that's a really big plus. Um, then, like I said, loads of plans for the greenhouse next year. I've got my measurements for it. I'm looking for racking. Uh, I'm probably going to end up making it myself, but I'm still looking at what's out there. <laughs> I'm always optimistic I'm going to find some absolutely perfect bargain. It doesn't normally work out that way and I have to make it, but still, I'm on looking. <laughs> and actually, I'll tell you what, one of the things that has made this week tricky is that it's been... Do you remember me telling you that the... Uh, we had found the basically the rotor for the aeroplanes coming over into Heathrow that comes straight over our plot. Well, we found that and it now turns out after however many years we've lived under the flight path, we now realise it happens week on, week off. So they swap over. So we get morning flights, morning flights run from like four o'clock in the morning until three in the afternoon. And then uh, they'll come over us and then they're not on us on the afternoon. Well, this week has been one of the weeks where they're coming right over the top of us and uh, it's dark at three o'clock in the afternoon so we haven't been able to film after the aeroplanes you can hear one coming over now i mean we're in the shed so it's quite quiet but when you're outside the microphone just picks up the aeroplane and uh, it's completely useless so a lot of filming is really like stilted and sort of trying to get it done it's very frustrating but two bits of news on the sound front uh, firstly next week we don't have aeroplanes coming over in the morning or in the daylight hours so that is top means filming will be much much easier and secondly uh, I've asked Father Christmas for a microphone <laughs> so hopefully after Christmas which is going to be in the next vlog uh, we are going to be uh, with some better sound because I've had quite a few comments recently of people getting frustrated with the sound and I do apologize there's something has happened with the phone where it used to be very good at picking up uh, when I was talking versus background noise. And then there's been a whole load of updates and now it's no longer good at doing that. Well done, Apple. 
<laughs> because I use my phone, I don't have a proper camera. Um, the update has just uh, destroyed whatever nice little bit of technology that was that used to do that. Anyway, so after Christmas we should have a microphone, which is top. Talking of technology though, something that I haven't managed to do this week is catch any video footage on the camera. I had it set out two nights, but we didn't catch anything other than rats, so I didn't think that was worth doing. <laughs> rat-a-tat-tats everywhere um so next week hopefully i'm going to keep keep setting it up and we will uh lie in wait and hope we catch something on the camera but it's very exciting every time i get the camera and i look at it and i'm looking through the footage and i'm like trying to spot what it is and on the little screen on the camera you can't tell and so i like race home put it on the camera on the um laptop sorry looking at the screen blow it up really big and it's like oh it's another rat it's another rat Anyway, yeah, so it is going to be Christmas next week. We're going to be pruning the grapevine, chopping down the raspberries, general merriment. I think talking of merriment, I don't have anything to cheers you with at the moment. This is the end chat. <laughs> I don't have anything to cheers you with at the moment, but as soon as I leave here, I'm going straight down the pub. So I will cheers you uh, from there at the very end. Uh, but we only nipped up here really to uh, pick some Cavallanero because I'm making uh, Italian bean soup at the moment which is with our bolotti beans from this year the dried ones oh every time i make it i forget how wonderful it is as you know i haven't been doing any cooking on this vlog because of the horrific state of our kitchen at the moment and you can't have a camera steady because there's no floor uh, but i did do a blog post not so long ago with the recipe for the bean soup and it is cavallanero and beans and tomatoes and parmesan and lardons if you're a lardon type of person oh so good so whichever side it is on top of the screen here there should be a little you know a link to that on the website i'll also stick it down underneath because it is so good absolutely outrageously delicious <laughs> anyway i'm up here to get the cavallanero for that and i'm going to use cavallanero and i'm also going to use the very tips of the kalette plants because the kalettes are starting to form now and by taking out that tip you just encourage them to put a bit more growth down below so i'm going to do that what else am i up here to do girlies I think that was it. Was that it? Uh, I'm going to have to say Merry Christmas, aren't I? As I'm just thinking about this, I've just realised that for my Patreon people, it's going to be Christmas Day when this, when the next vlog comes out. But for everybody else, Christmas will have already happened. This vlog should have been much more Christmassy than it was. Oh, I've lost the battle on the Christmas tree front this year. You know, I said mum really hates Christmas and she doesn't like Christmas trees. Well, we're going to Johanna's house for Christmas this year, which appears to have uh, meant that we're not allowed to have a Christmas tree at home. <laughs> so I'm not wildly impressed about this would be my first time not having a Christmas tree, even like when we just had to drag in a branch from outside in France. Like we still had a Christmas tree of some sorts with some paper decorations on it when I was living in abject poverty <laughs> I still had a Christmas tree this year no Christmas tree for Jesse so yeah I'm going to be reveling in Johanna's Christmas tree over Christmas but basically all I gotta say is Merry Christmas to you because I'm not going to see you until after Christmas am I yeah so when I do my cheers in a minute after I've picked my Cavallanero and gone down to the pub it will be Merry Christmas to everybody. Right, I better get on with this, otherwise I'm gonna be a bit late. Chat, chat, chat. these are the kale tops no they're not kale tops <laughs> they are kaleette tops uh, which grow very much like a brussels sprout so you get uh, these big tufty tops on top same way you can eat the tops of the brussels sprouts to encourage growth and then down here on the stem you see those little tufts so kalettes are just like a really open frilly version of a brussels sprout they're not like a big tight hard ball they're a bit looser 
but they're absolutely delicious and these ones are just starting to uh, form so hopefully taking the tops out we will get these for munching early in the new year god the new year looking uh, Kalet tops actually but look we have white fly a lot less bad than it has been in other years I'll give it that but there's still definitely white fly under there but still yum mum is standing in the shed cold and ready to go home I think are you ready to go home mum Yeah. And look, the sky, look at that. I mean, it's blooming cold and we don't have any sunshine, but it's blue. It's better than gray. It's better than gray. Anyway, I'm gonna take these and the Cavalier Nero home and I'll see you at the pub shortly. notice that this is not a pub. I mean it's got a crucial ingredient but this is not a pub. So I went to the pub and realised that it was the last Sunday before Christmas Eve. Um, I'd sort of forgotten that it was a Sunday and that it was the Christmas period and uh, I walked in and it was just like it was like being on a crowded tube train. It was absolutely packed, the football was on, it was raucous and loud and everybody was singing Christmas carols and so not an iota of Cheers filming uh, happened. So anyway, I am back home. <laughs> that was a complete fail, sorry about that chaps. But next week is going to be absolutely stuffed full of Cheerses because it is the week of Christmas so we will make up for it next week. <laughs> so yeah, just like I've already done my goodbye chat. I did it in the shed this week, you know, mixing things up a bit. But um, for a week where uh, not only I have been feeling like I didn't really want to do much, mum has been feeling exactly the same. And like I said earlier, I've noticed it like across the board comments from people who just feel a bit like, oh, don't really want to be out in the garden. Mixture of weather and also just coming to the end of the year, really. It's like some places uh, the whole garden kind of really shuts down in winter and you get a good old break. But... A lot of other places like the UK we just don't really get cold enough for the garden to shut down so it's like a constant slog and by this time of year we're all a bit knackered I think all a bit knackered anyway uh, this is me then saying Merry Christmas and next week uh, so uh, next Tuesday will be Boxing Day which is obviously after Christmas <laughs> But it is going to be the first uh, sew. I was going to say first sewing of the year. It's not first sewing of the year because it's still this year. The last sewing of the year, but the commencement of cracking on with spring will be the onion sew along on potty mouth next Monday evening. Uh, we are going to be sewing our onions. Oh, cheers, chaps! Merry Christmas! I hope you have an absolutely outstanding. Christmas day and I will see you on the other side. Cheers chaps. I don't even have any tinsel to put on my head because we don't have a Christmas tree. Couldn't even grab anything. We've got nothing. It's not very Christmassy is it? Next week. Next week will be Christmas and I promise. Cheers.